Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Every Thursday afternoon, 1 to 1.30 p.m., I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we will be discussing how expecting government to prevent global warming is like expecting a thief to manage one's finances. This is from my recent blog post by the same name. When proposing a stateless society, it is often asserted, <clears throat> quote, but we need government to protect endangered species, reduce global warming, and take care of the environment, end quote. This false claim demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of, quote, government is a gross understatement of the ability of, quote, government to manage anything as massive as the environment and merits an explanation of our existence in relation to the other 99.9% .9 of species that have already been extinct and are never to be seen again on this planet. The state can be accurately defined as a monopoly on initiated violence over a given geographical region. This cannot be stated enough. We must stop thinking of government as something mystical, magical, or exceptional. It is merely the institution of aggression we have all been taught to believe is necessary for civilized society to function. It is the boot on our necks that we have been taught to defer to, respect, and kiss. For without it, we would descend in brutal savagery. When it is understood that the people attracted to these positions of power are the lowest, vile, and most contemptible sociopathic parasites among us, it can be realized that this institution can serve no useful function for humanity. For every, quote, benefit it claims to confer, ten injustices are perpetrated. To claim that we need government to protect the environment, endangered species, or dwindling natural resources is to justify a violent means to achieve a dubious end. It is to allege, quote, but without slavery, who would pick the cotton? But without rape, how would we make babies? But without theft, how would people acquire wealth? End quote. It is more important that the people are given freedom to lead their lives how they choose without infringing on the freedom another, of another. Most people are disposed to living peacefully and engaging in voluntary trade with his fellow man. When given freedom, the conservation of natural resources is the inevitable byproduct. This is due to the presence of the price mechanism, supply and demand, and competition. By these market forces, the limited nature of resources is recognized and allocated appropriately. The free market is a constantly adaptable and dynamic entity that will flourish when given the freedom. Environmentalists who advocate for save the whale, save the bear, save the tiger, save the pandas, or any other such, quote, government organization, are in the end advocating for the further theft, violence, and coercion of their fellow man. Aside from the immorality, it must be acknowledged that the vast majority of the species that have ever existed on this planet are now extinct, never to be seen again. This was not as a result of carbon dioxide emissions, chemtrails, or poaching. Attempting to, quote, save these massive dying species from their inevitable fate is, in the end, an unproductive use of one's energy and resources. A much more noble cause would be save the bacteria as without the presence of friendly probiotic bacteria in our gut, in our GI tract, we would all die. However, this does not make a catchy tear-jerking banner that appeals to the emotional centers of the masses. And I leave you with, uh, with a quote uh, by Richard Buckminster Fuller. Pollution is nothing but the resources we are not harvesting we are allow them to disperse because we've been ignorant of their value. And another quote by George Carlin. 
We are so self-important. Everybody is going to save something now. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. And the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. Save the planet. We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of Earth Day. I'm tired of these self-righteous environmentalists, these white bourgeoisie liberals who think the only thing wrong with this country is that there aren't enough bicycle paths. People trying to make the world safe for Volvos. Besides, environmentalists don't care about the planet. Not in the abstract they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live. Their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might be personally inconvenienced. Narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me. The planet has been through a lot worse than us. Been through earthquakes, volcanoes, plate tectonic, continental drift, solar flares, sunspots, magnetic storms, the magnetic reversal of the poles, hundreds of thousands of years of bombardment by comets and asteroids and meteors, worldwide floods, tidal waves, worldwide fires, erosion, cosmic rays, recurring ice ages, and we think some plastic bags and some aluminum cans are going to make a difference? The planet isn't going anywhere. We are. George Carlin. So, global warming. A hot topic amongst uh, many uh, green sorts of people. Um, and it's, uh, it's natural and it's um, understandable for people to want to, uh, quote, save the planet. But, you know, before you, uh, <laughs> you know, before you try to uh, save anything as massive as a planet, we should first start small, of course. You know, it's like those people who, uh, who attempt to go into government and they say, I'm going to fix government, I'm going to put the right laws in, I'm going to make everything right. Just, if only my will be done, if only my laws be passed, then things will be right with the world, then we would all get along, then we would all live in harmony, right? This is, uh, this is quite a supreme arrogance, if ever I met one, um, which is a basic reason why uh, there is no perfect uh, philosopher king. Um, as, I, as I talked about in the uh, first episode on uh, the death of the philosopher king. Uh, so, saving the planet <laughs> is, is another reflection of this monumental, grandiose hubris that um, infects many people when they see, um, you know, injustices around the world or, uh, let's say, they see, you know, you know, rivers that are being polluted, oil spills, they see, you know, smokestacks from different companies and then people say you know look look what's happening look at this company it's polluting um you know that's proof right we need more government regulation we need to rein in these greedy capitalists right um which is a an entirely emotional and um uh, reptilian based um response to that it's like a knee-jerk reaction it's a reflex and it's not it's not rooted in, um, in logical reason whatsoever um, because you have to consider for a moment what the implications of that, um, uh, of that proposal would be, right? So, so as a response to, uh, you know, to all this you know, pollution that they're causing, right, you, you, you give more power to uh, the monopoly on violence that we know as government, right? more regulation, more size, more scope, it swells, it enlarges, and of course, as, as government swells, the, um, the rights and freedoms of the people diminish, right, um, pretty much uh, proportionately. So, you know, we really have to be careful, you know, anything, because we, we have to really realize, you know, what, what government is made of, right, it, all it's made of is the stolen funds from the people, right? Government is essentially bankrupt, right? It's not a business. It produces no usable product or service that anybody would buy voluntarily, which is why it must maintain its status 
as a monopoly on violence or a monopoly on initiated aggression, right? Because if the people were to willingly buy, uh, you know, were to willingly buy its products, or let's say, uh, let's say it's defense services in the form of police, or let's, let's say the education, if the people were willingly um, supporting it, why does it have to be forced, right? There's a, there's a saying, good ideas do not require force, right? So if you have to use force and violence and coercion to get someone to agree with, uh, with your idea, then perhaps your ideas are crap. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's pretty good, it's pretty good um, um, justification and reason that your ideas are crap if you require force, right? So, so giving the government more power to do anything uh, really is a self-destructive response and will always will, will, will tend to uh, accelerate the um, totalitarian control of our government over its citizens, over its own you know, geographical region, and historically that has accelerated the collapse of, of any empire that has uh, attempted to do that, right? They, uh, when they think that you know, people will get this idea, taxes equals wealth. No, taxes equals theft, <laughs> right? It's not, they're not producing anything, they're just siphoning off the, um, the wealth from the productive middle class, right? It's just, it's just a transfer. It's a wealth transfer from the, from the middle class to the, um, um, to the elitist uh, secret, uh, well, the, the elitist small group of people that, um, that call themselves the federal government, right? So, so, so it's, it's not the answer. And, and by the way, you know, it, regardless of how many regulations are put into effect, um, it, it's really, it, it only succeeds in giving these giant corporations, which already through their corporate status have, have legal immunity, right, um, um, from, you know, from, uh, uh, how do you say, repercussions of their actions, right? Um, so it, it's, it's giving them more power, since they already have connections through their lobbyists with, um, you know, with politicians and with the laws they pass. So regulations do, it's called um, regulatory capture, right? So the, this is the idea that regardless of how many regulations are put into effect, the only logical conclusion will be that uh, it's going to stifle and destroy the small businesses that are trying to, um, that are trying to get a foothold in that particular in that particular field, right? Regardless of what field, regardless if it's you know big oil, big energy, big you know money, you know any any small bank, any small oil company, any small energy company, any any small business that tries to gain a foothold in these fascistic fields, which are dominated by these you know mega national corporations having political connections to um, uh, to the state they won't be they, they won't be allowed to flourish they won't be allowed to grow whatsoever because all these regulations will just you know prevent them from gaining a foothold right um, because they don't have the resources they don't have the money you know they don't have the legal department they don't have uh, you know a, an, an army of lawyers and and lobbyists to um, to give them any kind of political clout any kind of uh, strength so they just never take you know they never take hold and uh, and it's quite tragic. And, and the only way that they're able to continue is by vying for the, uh, the reins of power that the federal government um, controls, right? Through, through their uh, monopoly on violence, which, uh, which is completely um, contingent on the, uh, the police and the military, right? The police are, maintain their, stat, their um, monopoly on initiated force, uh, locally right in the uh in the in the geographical region of the country and in the case of the united states the military um dominates other countries right so yeah so so it's very it's a very pointless idea you know giving giving these corporations more power than uh giving these corporations more power than they really um <laughs> should have right and 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 government just facilitates this entire um, system of exploitation and abuse. So the other the other concept about um, you know saving all these uh, species and everything, saving 
you know, saving things that are dying is pointless. You know, you know, as I said in the blog post, 99.9% .9 of, of all species that have ever existed are now extinct, all right? I mean, you can make the claim that, uh, you know, our actions may be accelerating certain other species from being extinct, but it's, it's still not a justification for um, entrusting government to, to manage these affairs, right? You know, you can, you can educate people if you want to do this, you can talk to people, you can, you know, make videos, make flyers, whatever, but once you begin to involve government in any kind of affair, um, you're, you're, you're really setting yourself up for massive uh, disappointment and suffering. Because involving the government in anything is basically implying that we need, we need masters, that we need people to control us because without, without people in power, we are idiots, brutes, morons, and we would not know how to take care of ourselves, right? Which may be true for some people, but if, you know, for, if, for those people that require depend, or are dependent on government, that's not a justification to enslave everyone else, right? So the 5% or, or more of people that um, <clears throat> can't fend for themselves, they don't have the responsibility, they don't have the determination to, uh, to, ma to, to, to make a business or to educate themselves, and they just live off, you know, government subsidized housing, um, health care, food, you know, unemployment. That's still not a justification for the theft and violation of the, of the rights of the many. Definitely not. So, so we have to take in this. We have to take this into account. Um, you know what what it means when you actually give give government more power, right? And and so this this whole idea of global warming. I'm not even contesting whether global warming is actually happening. That's kind of ridiculous and pointless because whether it is happening or it isn't, we are not realistically going to make a difference. <laughs> and I guess that sounds a little bit cold and stoic and callous, but we, you know, our existence is basically as a result of, you know, the weather changes and the climate shifts that have occurred on this planet, right? So if the climate shifts again, <laughs> let's say we go back into another ice age, you know, whether it's, whether it's our, our fault or not, it doesn't really matter, we survive or not, it's like, it, it, this is not, this is not a moral issue. This is just, this is just a fact of life. This is, these are cycles that occur right, in our environment, and, and let's say we do pollute, let's say, you know, the stuff we do, do doesn't destroy our ecosystem and make it uninhabitable for humans, all right, so then we will be annihilated, <laughs> and maybe the earth will be better off without us, <laughs> in that sense, so the, these are things that, um, <clears throat> there are, they are so removed and disconnected from our day-to-day -day reality as to be genuinely, um, absurd to even consider you know it's like it's like what do you what do you first worry about you first worry about the guy who's choking you now or do you worry about you know will i be able to have enough food for next year <laughs> you know you have to think about what's more important in the here and now okay and and what is the greatest violator of uh of rights and what is the greatest um threat to the life of of humans today and I would argue that it is government, all right, in, in the form of, uh, you know, you just look at, the, look, look at the history of the 20th century in terms of uh, world wars um, regarding, you know, countries that have, that have uh, you, um, instituted communism and socialism, right? You have all the, all the world wars and, uh, and, you know, you have all the, uh, the politicide, the democide, the mass murder, the genocide of, of, of a regime of either its own, its own people or that of another, uh, that of another country, and uh, <clears throat> the trend is clear. Okay, those people uh, about in the 20th century, I think it's about like um, a quarter of a billion people, a quarter of a billion with a B, right? About 250 million people have died in the 20th century alone through these methods: world wars, right? Democide, politicide, mass murder, genocide, things like that. Um, and so it's, I think it's quite clear that um, the state is the greatest threat to human existence, uh, <laughs> you know, by far, okay? Much more than um, <laughs> global warming, much more than, 
carbon emissions, much more than, uh, than chemtrails, much more than plastic bags, much more than uh, <laughs> poaching, right? So we really have to put things into perspective here. We have to, we have to think about what's important in our lives, all right? And um, I mean, sure, it's good to think about, you know, what's the repercussions of my actions on future generations. Of course, that's important too. However, we shouldn't, uh, I, I definitely do not think that that should be the main focus of our lives because we, we would really be um, sacrificing the beauty of, uh, you know, the, 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 the struggle that should be going on right now and replacing it with you know, a far distant concept that barely has uh, significance to our lives today. And, and that, you know, incidentally, we can make, uh, you know, very little change in, you know, like for example, the, you know, government is something that is, uh, is only held together through the people's belief system, right? Through their belief in the myth of authority, right? That's the only way, that's the only way it's held together, right? Um, there was a, um, there was a great, um, uh, experiment called the, the, um, the Stanley Milgram experiment in, I think it was 1961 following, um, World War II and, because it was the question was raised, what kind of people would be um, uh, would be the kind of people that would carry out those atrocities that the uh, that the SS soldiers, the, the Nazi German soldiers, um, did, who you know killed the uh, the Jews, right, the, the the mass murder of the Jews, and you know they were wondering how how prevalent is a per the kind of person that would do that, right? So. So this experiment, this uh, psychologist Stanley Milgram, he um, he gathered together, um, you know, people, you know, he screened them, you know, I guess he he removed those people that were had mental illness or or, or whatever, and he um, so he he only included in the experiment those people who considered themselves to be you know decent, moral, good people, you know, I assume tax paying people, <laughs> all right, so decent, moral, good people. He 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 um, he brought them into this experiment. They they met an actor who they thought they were going to be testing, you know, giving him certain questions to test. And then they met a uh, an authority figure, a man in a white lab coat. And uh, and so and so the test was the, they were going to um, ask the actor uh, certain questions. And uh, and every time the actor got the question wrong. They would give electrical shock, right? And um, as the uh, as the questions as the actor kept getting the questions wrong, the electrical shock would would increase in in, uh, in severity until I think it was about 400, um, 400 volts or four hundred fifty volts, which is uh, considered a fatal dose of electric shock was given, right, at the very end, and uh, and the percentage of these decent moral good human beings that um, carried this experiment to the very end, to the fatal dose of electrical shock, was appalling. It was shocking. It was about something like 80-85% of the people carried it through to the end. And, and granted, some of them did, um, they did question uh, what they were doing, they asked, you know, they, they asked the, the, the myth, uh, the, you know, it's called the, um, the guy who's in a, the, the authority figure in the white lab coat, he's like, you know, the guy sounds like he's in pain, because, you know, he could hear a recording of the guy, was, which was fake, but he said, the guy sounds like he was in pain, um, do we have to continue, should we continue? And the guy said, well, this is part of the experiment, this is science, so you, this is what you signed up for, we must proceed. <laughs> so the authority figure hands, ha hands over to the person uh, how do you say, um, the permission to do whatever. So apparently the people who were, who were doing, delivering the shock, they felt free of responsibility because they were told to do so. So they did, did not feel any moral, um, um, moral remorse from their actions. And, uh, and, you know, of course, you know, as they were delivering the fatal, you know, the fatal sh blow, you know that they uh, actually. I think the person would, 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 would the recording was even there was no response, even before they got to the fatal blow, and they kept asking the questions. The person wouldn't even answer, and they would they would keep delivering increasingly stronger shocks. 
which is very scary, which is very scary that most people, um, if they were told to do something by, by an authority figure, would, would rather follow orders than obey their own conscience. Right? This is a very scary thing. And it basically highlights how much of human behavior is, um, goes in line with conforming and obeying. And perhaps this is a result of our um, you know, public schools, public indoctrination. Uh, there may be a big, large part of it, um, because that's one thing that we're taught in public schools is that, you know, um, truth comes from authority figures, and if you want to excel, you must obey, and you must conform. Obey, you know, whatever they want to teach you and regurgitate on command, and that's considered intelligence and wisdom. So, so yeah, so this is the myth of authority. And this is what government is. It's the belief in the myth of authority, right? So when we do not give those officials in charge um, the power that they have, that they, that they so enjoy, okay? Especially the police, you know, when, when the police, let's say in mass, start saying, you know, we, we don't want to enforce your, um, your wretched laws anymore. We want to enforce your your immoral threats and commands, then where is their power now? They have no power. That is their power. The power of the guard dogs to protect them and to carry out their orders. So, so uh, apparently it seems as though our, our police and military are not so different from the SS and the Nazis in Germany that we were so proud that we defeated. Okay? Because it's all about obedience and... Um, <clears throat> obeying the orders regardless of how immoral they are, okay? This is the danger, this is the immense danger of authority, of, what, of, what, of obeying authority, what it actually means, all right? Because obeying authority always, always means to set aside your conscience, okay? You're not following your own moral compass and you are instead fulfilling the wishes of another person, okay? You're not acting like a human being at all, actually. Um, you're acting like a conduit, like a machine, like an automaton, all right? And we are not machines, we are people, all right? And, and that must be realized. So, so think about that. Um, next time you vote for the Green Party, next time you vote for any resolution to uh, subsidize, it doesn't matter how good it sounds, solar panels, wind energy, um, if government is involved, if, if it says this is government subsidized, you must resist it. However strange that may sound, okay, it, we can do anything that government does through the private sector, through the free markets, through voluntary interactions, much, much better, more efficient, okay, than government can ever do, right? Because again, Government does not exist. Government is just people in costumes telling other people in costumes what to do while they're committing massive crimes. All right? And we have to realize this, okay? Uh, wearing a, a, a TSA uniform, wearing a police uniform, wearing a military uniform does not exempt you from the laws of morality, okay? The laws of morality do not change depending on what badge you have, depending on what uniform you're wearing. Okay, if it's, if it's wrong and immoral for the common man to steal, assault, rape, and murder, the same applies to anybody else. Doesn't matter if they call themselves politicians, policemen, or the military. All right, this must be realized. This is the, this is the, um, the great hypocrisy of belief in the great fiction that is the state. All right, so um, I'm going to end right there. That's, this is, um, so, so I just want to highlight everybody, please, please, always think for yourselves. Do not hand over your, um, your independence, okay, to any group, organization, <laughs> or even worse, any government. <laughs> think for yourselves. So this is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Um, wishing you all have a wonderful day. Take care.